All right. Hey, Bill, I'm a Yemeni guy who has been, <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. No disrespect here. Who's been living in Europe for the past six fucking years. Although everything is going all right, I want to ask your advice because I can relate to your personality. Hang on a second, sir or ma'am. I want to fucking figure out whether I'm assuming you're from Yemen. What is Yemeni? What is a Yemeni? Whom? To whom is a, <laughs> is a Yemenite? Oh, why did that all disappear? What is a Yemeni? Come on. All right. Relating to Yemen or its people. Holy shit, I was right. That's a nice flag. They got a nice flag. I like just the three bars. I'm a big three-bar flag guy. France, Italy, Ireland, Yemen. Um, all right. What do you guys think of the new Russian flag? I kind of like the old one. The old one was the shit. All red with that sickle. I thought, th I thought that that one was fucking dope. The new one's all right. What is it? Red, white, and blue? Holy shit, they got the same colors as us. Is that what it is? It's something like that. I don't know. I was watching this whole thing about Vladimir Putin poisoning these guys and shit. Allegedly. I have no idea. I was watching it on 60 Minutes, so it's got to be true, right? Tick, 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 tick. All right, Yemeni guy in Europe. All right, I've been over there for the last six fucking years. I want to ask you a question because I can relate to your personality. My family has been living in a war zone in Yemen for the past two years. Our old house, our old house there was bombed and my father was inside, but the lucky bastard came out without a scratch. I miss them and wish I could help them, but that's kind of not possible now. All right. Before, I already feel like this is going to be way over my head. Before that, I lost some good old friends that I knew for more than 10 years because of some stupid incidents was beaten by a gang of more than 15 men in Malaysia on a trip there for no reason. And my two year ex-girlfriend at the time cheated on me with their current boyfriend. Isn't this fucking amazing? This guy's from the other side of the planet and it's the exact same shit. Gang violence. And your fucking girl got sick of you and fucking banged somebody else. Cheated on me with her current boyfriend while I was on that trip, I guess, to Malaysia. And didn't have the decency to break up with me before that. She was my first. Ah, you know, what are you going to do? People are young. They don't know how to break up. So they wait till you go to Malaysia and they fuck somebody. I mean, the, this is a, a, a time-honored tradition of how to break up with somebody. All right? So if you're with your first love, what have we learned? Do not go by yourself to Malaysia. I don't know how many times I brought that up on this podcast. You cannot go to fucking Malaysia. All right. I just graduated from college, have a beautiful girlfriend, which I love and feel blessed with what I have. I know that I was an asshole at certain moments of my life, but I have changed a long time ago, and I'm still trying to be more honest, clear, and focused. Well, welcome to the club, sir. I'm currently looking for a job in Germany. And we'll try to apply after that for a German passport, which will make my life much easier and allow me to start a company and sustain myself without being dependent on others. Exactly. You want to work for yourself. I know that you have lived certain moments in your life where you were faced by challenge, faced with challenges that might have taught a lesson, but at the same time left a mark on your self-confidence. How did you empower yourself and what advice would you give a young man like me confronting life's challenges? That's it, fuck face. Congratulations on your baby and fuck you. <laughs> now there's a guy, okay, who speaks at least three languages and still is able to break balls. Isn't that amazing? He probably speaks Yemeni, Yemenite, Yemenasian, whatever the fuck he speaks, right? He knows that one. He's in Germany, so he's got to speak that language. Und why are you in this space, right? And he can also speak English. Um, how did I empower myself? Uh, I used to just say shit out loud to myself. You know, when I would feel the dark cloud of doubt coming in, I would just, you know, it took me a while, but I would, I would um, 
But I mean, I wasn't facing what you were, you're facing, being an immigrant. So, I mean, you're facing way more than I did. In the, but the fact that, uh, I don't know, you're trying to become a better person, you know, you know to reach out for help and all that. I, th- I think I, my gut says you're going to be fine. What you have to do in general is when the doubt comes in, you got to beat the shit out of it. You know, you have to. The, the biggest thing is, is that you're conscious that this, of the self-doubt. So once you're conscious of it, you can then address it. It's when you're, when you're really young and you're not conscious of it. And that thought comes in and then you start dwelling on it. And then it just washes over your whole body. And you can literally, you know, have a fucking panic attack. What you have to do, I did anyways, is, um, you know, you try to cancel it out with the positive thought. I know this sounds like hokey shit, but I used to just say shit out loud. I read some book one where, and it started off with like, I would just be walking down the street, you know, walking by other people. And I would just randomly be, just be like, yeah, fuck that, fuck that. (laughs) He's looking at me like I was nuts, but I was like, fuck that negative thought. I mean, I wouldn't yell it, but I would, I would kind of just say, fuck that, fuck that. No, it isn't. No, it isn't, right? No, it won't, or whatever the hell it was. And then it just became like when I moved to New York and um, trying to get in at the clubs, I knew I was going to get in, but, you know, the day-to-day just seemed like uh, like impossible. And, you know, the club owners and everything. And, you know, some of them were cool and others enjoyed the fact that you were desperate and just really enjoyed that position of power over you. And uh, I would walk out of the club dejected. You know, I was afraid. You know, am I going to run out of money? I don't have a job right now. I'm doing these driving back to Massachusetts to fucking feature in Dick Doherty's rooms. That was not barely covering... You know, living in New York, every time you stepped outside, you blew 20 bucks, 30 bucks, you know? And um, I just, for, I started, I, what I said was, I'm tougher than you, New York, is that what I would say. As hokey as that sounds, that's what they, they, you know, the city would kick me in the balls, and then I would just mumble that to myself. You know, sometimes like six times in a row until I got that thought on my head. And I would just say, and then I would just be like, I'm going to get in the clubs. I'm going to get in and I'm going to make a living. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. (laughs) I mean, something like that. That's what I had to do. And, um, and then it just, you know, and that continues throughout your fucking life. And, uh, you know, then you get to my age, you know, and I'm doing great and everything. But there's also there's always your mortality around the fucking corner. And how I've kind of mentally dealt with death. The inevitable death is that like um, that. I just think it's going to be a great experience. You know what I mean? That uh, I don't think anything bad happens to you when you die. Either you just go into the ground and then that's it. And uh, then that's it. You know, you got to be a person on this planet as opposed to like a fucking mosquito. You got the best fucking experience. Hopefully you did. Um, And then that's it. It's fucking over. Or you become something else. And I just don't think that is bad. You know, I just don't think it doesn't make any sense that it would then just be bad. Um, I don't know. I hope that helps you. I got a little off the rails there. So what I would say is you just baby step your way, you know? And like for me, making it as a comedian was like a 20 year fucking 15, 20 year process. I was obviously, I was not the overnight. I didn't have the hook. I didn't have any of that fucking shit. And I just basically every day, you know, was fucking hacking at the tree until it came down. And, um, you know, you just don't quit. You just, that's it. You just don't quit. You don't give in a negative thought. And every day you just fucking 
take a few steps towards it. And then one day you just wake up and you're where you wanted to be. And you're like, how the fuck did that happen? You know, it's funny, you don't feel any different, you know? So, uh, but you'll be all right. I think you're going to be all right. You know, you speak three different fucking languages. You can break balls in English. I mean, you sound, you sound like you got a great sense of humor and you're trying to get, you're going to be fine. Just say that to yourself. I'm going to be fine. This is going to work out. And uh, then that's it. Then you can try to fucking help somebody else out along the way. All right.